Hey guys, it's Stu uh, from Student Scale Models and uh, as promised in my last monthly update this is my inbox review of Trumpeter's Challenger 2 Main Battle Tank Operation Tank Iraq 2003 um, The difference between the Ordinary Chally 1 which was in the first Gulf War and basically this one is that this one is actually got slightly thicker armour in the reign of Chobham armour um, primary example was that one of these when it went into the evasion of the Iraqi city um, uh, during the last um, campaign uh, it was hit by a <coughs> anti-tank missile uh, but basically the armour was that thick that the actual tank was in operation the next day um, and it is one of the world's best protected tanks and obviously since that They've actually put on reactive armour, which you see on the illustration here as well, to basically further increase its protection. So if you're inside one of them and somebody's throwing something at you, it's just going to bounce off, basically. <laughs> so it'd be a case of, oh, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, these actually started replacing the old Chally ones in 1994 and uh, are in service to the present day. In fact, I think the last one was delivered to the army around about 2003. And uh, the Omani army also has them in their arsenal as well. So uh, there you go. Um, I personally was looking out for a Chally 2. I did have one previously, which was the one with, I think, with the bulldozer blade. Um, and sold that off um, just basically to make some money for myself, uh, along with some of my previous stash. Uh, but I saw this one at a bargain price for, I think it was about... £16.99 on eBay and decided to snap it up so uh, there you go um, I've had a quick look at this kit it is superb I have to say uh, it's up to trumpet as a new normal standard having built the AS90 I'm quite looking forward to building this one possibly at some time in the future um, and then possibly I'll get hold of a Chally one um, probably the old Tamiya kit just to go alongside it uh, but as you can see here you've got the reactive armour all along the front and obviously you've got the dust filters on the side of the turret as well and then you've got a laser ranger finder on top of the turret as well as on the gun um, superb tank uh, I think one was at tank fest this year and they've actually increased the armor on that one as well uh, so I think the mighty jingles was saying on one of his videos <coughs> Um, I would have liked to have gone there, but for obvious reasons, my friend was ill, so unfortunately I couldn't go. But uh, fingers crossed, hopefully I'll get to go next year. Uh, but it is an impressive looking vehicle all the same, hence um, I just thought I'd do it into my sort of modern armour range, as it were. So, uh, if you, as I say, the box art is... Uh, not bad uh, it's actually depicting a tank on its way into uh, the main capital of Iraq um, with the crew on the top there as you can see uh, so it's not a bad box I guess I have seen better uh, but that's my personal point of view you may think differently um, it's quite a deep box as you can see here quite a big box because I mean this is obviously a big vehicle um, and if anybody wants to get hold of this kit, if I can find the kit number on this one. Hmm, that's strange, it doesn't seem to have one. Oh, here we go. <coughs> here you go, this is the kit number, uh, which is number 00323. So if you want to pause that for a minute, by all means do so. There you go. Um, on the side of the box you've got an illustration of the completed kit as you can see here which looks absolutely awesome yeah, especially with those skirts along the bottom there and obviously you've got your colour view of the version that you're doing because obviously this is a desertized version so I'm sorry if it's flickering a bit on here but hey. um, which is one of the reasons I actually went for this one although they trumpeted to do, do two other versions so there we go um, Let's open the box, see what's inside. You've got, oh, let's have a look. Uh, I think you've got one, two, three, four, five. 
five, six, eight, nine screws, I think. And then obviously you've got your turret. And then you've got the main hull here, upper and lower. Um, plastic tracks. I'll say no more about those. And then obviously you've got your decals and a piece of rope for your tow cable. Uh, I'll be sourcing an aftermarket cable for that because that is a pig to basically put on the two ends. Uh, but as usual, as I normally do with most kits, we'll go with the instruction seat first. Uh, you've got the box art illustration up the top here as you can see. All the symbols for what you're going to need during the actual process of the actual build. Uh, and then obviously a little bit of a fast now to put the decals on. It's like telling you somebody to suck eggs, but hey. Um, then inside you've got the sprue tree of all the sprues for the kit. Maybe you can see that, guys. And one over here. So all together, I think you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, well, about nine sprues, nine, ten sprues all together. And then obviously it's got the track there, uh, which comes with the kit, and it's telling you how to advise you to spread sprue, obviously for your aerials. And then how to melt the tracks together. <coughs> or you can use uh, epoxy glue. Um, then the first process is obviously the wheel assembly with the sprocket, main running wheels and the idler wheel. And then obviously you've got the main suspension bolts going in, and then the mid wheels, uh, which is for the running of the tracks, frontal uh, final drive, okay. Um, and then the drive for the, uh, oh no, that's the final drive, oh, I don't know what that is at the back there, I'll obviously get confused, that's the rear brackets for the uh, suspension on the idler wheel then you put all the main suspension suspension arms onto the vehicle including the rear drive and uh, exhaust and air outlets and this is indicating you've got to make six of these units as you can see here then it's telling you to put the wheels on uh, some people do I prefer not to just make painting a lot easier then obviously you put your sprocket on and your final drive on, okay. Uh, then it's the rear panel assembly, as you can see here, all the sub-assemblies go onto the rear uh, plate. Then the build-up of all your uh, jerry cans and holders, as you can see there. And then more sub-assemblies onto the rear plate. And basically assembly of the actual fuel can carrier and the fuel cans itself which go on to obviously the back of the vehicle. And then again more sub-assemblies, rear light etc. Uh, which go on to the front of the armour, the glacis plate along with the driver's hatch and uh, viewport. And again, Ooh, hello, there's a little note here. It's telling you to cut out various holes, etc. <coughs> because it made the actual basis of the kit was from the standard uh, Chally 2. And then obviously, uh, upper hole assembly again, as you can see here for the engine deck. And then obviously, you've got the engine uh, upper hole assembly for the engine doors to the access to the engine I'm not sure if you can actually get an aftermarket engine for this I'm not sure I might look one out then obviously you've got the um, ammunition cases which go onto the side of the vehicle and the grab handle and also you've got the travel lock as well uh, also you've got the two um, oh actually I think that's indicating where to put the uh, wing mirrors but there you go then obviously the upper hole is attached to the lower hole and then you've got the sub-assembly of the reactive armour, as you can see here. Okay, guys. Which then goes on to the sides of the vehicle and the front uh, glacis plate, as it were. And then obviously you've got another sub-assembly for the grab handles on the back. And this is the assembly of the frontal uh, radioactive armour. And then obviously you've got the tarps, which go on the top, along with some more storage. Uh, re uh, reactive armor goes on either side, and then you've got the front sort of um, uh, mud guards, 
and then the assembly of the barrel obviously it's in two halves and four separate designs I am going to see if I can source it on aftermarket metal barrel then you got the mantlet assembly submachine gun assembly uh, crew hatch and then obviously you apply the actual machine gun to the commander's hatch as it were or the loader's hatch and then obviously you've got your tool kits which is the assembly of all those okay tool boxes sorry <clears throat> next stage is to go on to the assembly of the turret itself first off you've got the range finder there and then you add that to the commander's cupola along with the vision ports and then put the lower uh, part of the turret onto the upper part along with the barrel and the mantlet then adding the crew hatch and the commander's vision cupola as it were reactive armor goes either side onto the front of the actual um, turret along with the smokestacks and then you've got the assembly of the toolboxes onto the turret along with the commander's cupola as it was there rear light aerial antennae etc and then obviously more to do with the air filter and toolboxes you've got the rear filters on as well and then add that to the uh, vehicle along with the outer reactive armor okay and then you've got a basically the color scheme itself is all overall sand I see it's done in mr. hobby colors but again you've got the hobby color app which you can download from Play Store and use it for whichever uh, brand of paint you're using okay um, it's telling you a mixture of sand yellow and white it's obviously to give it that light sand color but I'll be using my own Tamiya colours. Um, and then you've got your painting guide again for the various regiments that you're going to be using. It doesn't actually give you the regiments as it were. <coughs> but there you go. So that is the instruction sheet. As I say, I'm going to go through the kit gradually. Just put the box bottom on there. First off, you've got the decals. Now... It doesn't actually indicate which regiment it is, but they're all obviously the units which were served out in Iraq in 2003. Uh, I think the decals are fairly going to be fairly okay down to bed. Uh, I'm not sure who they're made by. Oh, CP. Oh, no, that's telling. I don't know. I think it's Trumpler's own design. But there you go. Um, then obviously you've got the rubber tracks. Again, I will be sourcing um, possibly workable track links, if not for alls. Or Spade A um, tracks, which I was advised by by a modeler at the recent show I attended. Uh, they are virtually the same as Frawls, but a hell of a lot cheaper. Um, so that apparently they actually do them for each vehicle that there's ever been. Uh, so even the most obscure, so probably worth you having a look on Spade A's on eBay. Uh, you can direct all them directly from China. Uh, admittedly, it's going to take you three weeks, but at the same time, half the price that it would be on frills but there you go uh, so i'll probably check out and see if spade ace do those as well but i mean to be honest with you that although they are rubber the level of detail on the tracks is very well caught right okay one thing i am going to do is show you the hole so i'll take that out of the bag Take the hole out. Funny enough, the actual plastic is uh, sort of light sandy grey, but the thing that I have just automatically noticed is the actual non slip surface is very well caught on here, guys. It's superb. And if you can see that in the light, beautifully detailed. Uh, the grills are beautifully detailed as well. I mean, you can have the option of doing um, etch brass if you want to, but to be honest with you guys, I don't think you're going to need it with the level of detail on here, with the air outlets as well. And you've even caught the petrol caps on here beautifully. So, yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. Lower hole, um, very well moulded again. 
Uh, so that's nice. Not much. Uh, again, there's a nice anti-slip surface at the front of the hole as well. So that's quite nice. And we're all done to you on that trumpeter. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Put it back in the bag. Still suffering from this cold, I'm afraid, guys. But hey, not as bad as it was. Um, next thing to look at is the turret. If it's anything like the hole, it's going to be beautifully textured. Um, yeah, where will I put my scissors? Oh, here we go. Right. Again, you've got the upper and lower part of the turret, uh, as you can see here. Fits like so. Then obviously you've got your side arm that goes on. Again, we've got some lovely, lovely texture on in here. Not as, uh, I must admit, it's not as noticeable, so I might need some Mr. Surfacer on that. But the thing I do like is you've got the weld number on the top of the turret here. Um, I don't know if anybody can see it. There you go. Can you see that, guys? So that's nicely caught, I have to say. Um, certainly a nice um, source for weathering as well. So beautifully caught, especially the panel lines. Uh, but the only thing I don't like is they didn't give you the option to basically put any glass in with the viewports for the commander's cupola. But hey, I'm sure it's going to make a nice kit all the same. Um, next two screws is the reactive armour. And do that again. <coughs> again, there's some nice texture on the reactive armour as well uh, for the anti slip surface. Beautifully caught, cool, especially with the bolts. Uh, again, with the weathering on that, that should look really good. And uh, that obviously there's the main frame for the reactive armour, which you can see there. If you can see it there, guys. Okay. And obviously you've got the front reactive armour here. Which again is nicely caught. Sorry, I keep trying to get this damn thing to go into focus. And the side reactive armour again for the other side. L beautifully moulded. Really nicely caught, guys. And obviously you've got then the air filters for the side of the turret, which you can see here, the dust filters, and for the front and rear of the turret as well. And also I love the way they've caught the skirts. That is beautifully caught, it really is. You wouldn't need any aftermarket for that. Oh, I think this is going to make one beautiful build. If it's anything like the S90, it will do. And then obviously you've got the front skirts here. Um, you, I, should, I should imagine you can actually get some aftermarket for that. But there you go. I don't think you're going to need to on this kit, to be honest with you. But uh, very nicely caught. Beautifully moulded. And the thing I like about it, there's not an ounce of flash again. Which I don't think there was on the AS90 to be honest with you guys. So that goes in the box. Next up you've got the running gear and some of the suspension and the suspension arms. There we go. I'll just show you one sprue this because you've got virtually two the same here. As you can see here guys, lovely work here, uh, especially with the running wheels and the suspension, obviously it goes to the uh, bottom part of the suspension. And obviously you've got your main gates there, but uh, very well caught, especially on the idler wheels and the final drive there, which you can see, uh, beautifully done. Um, obviously whoever's done their research on this and absolutely studied it, oh there is the inner part of the wheels. Uh, I had it ran the wrong way. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, anyway, you get a better idea. Again, with the weathering process, this should look really, really superb, guys. Very nice to court. Okay. And 
Next up, you've got some more of the sub assemblies for the rear tanks and jerry cans, as well as storage boxes. Uh, and machine gun rest. Yes, I don't know. Maybe you've got machine gun on here. Beautifully, beautifully cool in here, guys. I have to say, I've just had a look at this. Awesome. There we go. You see that? There we go. If I'll get it up a bit nearer the camera, there's your machine gun. Beautifully detailed. But you've got two on the sprue. So, there we are. There's your main machine gun again. If you can see that, guys. Beautifully moulded, lovely detail on it, even got the ring, obviously you've got the um, ring for the commander's cupola, there's your ammunition boxes, you've got the halves of your fuel tanks here which are beautifully made, lovely detail on them, and even on the jerry cans as well, beautifully caught. This is going to make a lovely, lovely kit, I think. There you go. So that's that. <coughs> and the final two sprues. <coughs> which are the sides of the turret. Uh, you've got a bit of the mantlet as well. I think the barrel's possibly in here as well. Here it is. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right. An ultimate sprue. Uh, as I was saying, you got some of the side skirts here, uh, part of the commander's cupola, as you can see here. Again, the level of detail on it is absolutely gorgeous. It really is. And there's your grab handles as well. So they had quite a few of them on this tank, so there we go. And then you've got the crew hatch, and even on the actual hatch, um, you've even got nice anti-slip surface detail on that as well. Beautifully caught. And there's your smokestacks, as you can see here. And obviously you've got the sides of the turret. There we go. There's your mantlet, which you can see here. And again, part of it has got lovely anti-slip surface detail on it as well. Beautifully cool. I'll tell you this, guys, I think this is going to build into an awesome kit. It really is. And uh, the final sprue is obviously your side skirts, which you've got there. Okay, um, rear plate, which is here, and then obviously you've got the sub assembly for your barrel. Again, detail on it is very nice, but the only thing that's going to be a bugger to set, uh, is get rid of those seam lines, um, especially with this detail on it. It's not going to be easy not to lose it, uh, so it's going to be a bit of a sod. So I think what I'm going to do is see if I can source aftermarket metal barrel uh, for the Chally 2. I don't know if you can source it, but we'll see. Obviously you've got your tow ropes here. Not badly moulded, I have to say. And uh, all the other sub-assemblies which go on the front plate and rear plate. Okay, again part of the barrel here as well. And obviously you've got your frontal armor, is that your rear no that's your frontal armor. Again the detail on it on this surface detail and texture of the anti-slip surface is beautifully caught. Really nicely done guys. And then obviously you've got your sprockets right there as well. And the detail on them is beautiful. Again, none of these I can see any any flash at all. And then obviously you've got your ammunition boxes there, your tool boxes there as well. <coughs> so yeah um, so all in all that is actually what you get with this kit and uh, <coughs> excuse me it looks to be a lovely lovely kit um, a lovely simple build and if there's anything like the Trump AS90 I did it will be um, I can't fault Trump to be honest with you I don't think one of their kits I've heard a bad thing about them um, 
in all the time I've been in this hobby since I've been back in it. So yeah, I would definitely recommend, um, harshly recommend, if you want a good chalet and a desert sized version, definitely go out and buy one. Um, it's very cheap for what you get as well, so uh, very good value for money I would say guys. Uh, admittedly I think there is some aftermarket you can get and all being well I hope to be able to source a metal barrel for it we'll see anyway that's it for now guys I hope you like the inbox review of the Chally 2 uh, Operation Telic Iraq 2003 and um, I'm glad I got one in my stash actually because it wouldn't be the same without a Chally anyway that's it for now guys so until the next time get kit crazy happy modelling and I'll speak to you soon